Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Tucker. I'm an engineer in my organization's IPNOC. And this is going to be a brief introduction to one of my favorite uh, networking devices in general, which is the Nokia or former Alcatel Lucent service router platform. So the first thing we'll do is define uh, a service router. So a service router has to be capable of the following. It needs to be capable of residential service delivery, like your ADSL, your cable, uh, IPTV, things like that. It needs to be capable of business service delivery. So your layer two VPNs, your layer three VPNs. It also needs to be capable of mobile packet core and backhaul, uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Uh, it also needs QoS, reporting, route filtering, and routing policies. Let's look at the common components of a service router. Uh, first, we have the IOMs, or the input-output modules. And these are synonymous with Juniper's FPC, or Cisco SIP modules. And we have the IMM, which is our integrated media module. This is synonymous with Juniper's FPC, or Cisco SIP as well. Our MDA, Media Dependent Adapter. This is synonymous with Juniper's PIC or MIC, as well as Cisco's SPA adapter. Then our SFM, or Switch Fabric Module. This is synonymous with Juniper's Routing Engine or Cisco's Route Switch Processor. We also have a Control Plane Module, which again is synonymous with Juniper's Routing Engine or Cisco's Route Switch Processor. Then we have SROS, which is the Service Router Operating System. And it's synonymous with Juniper's Junos or Cisco's iOS or iOS XR. And lastly, we have FP4, which is Nokia's latest network processor chipset, capable of 2.4 terabits per second. And it's synonymous with Juniper's Trio chipset or Cisco's Tomahawk chipset. And here we have the physical component installation. So if you were to logically represent a given service router, in our particular case, this is a 7750 SR7. So it's a seven slot uh, device. Uh, we have the service router itself with a given host name. This is just PE01 in Hudson, Ohio. Uh, and into that service router, we install our input output modules. In our example, we're using slots two and three. And into those input output modules, we install our media dependent adapters. And then finally into our MDAs go our fiber and transceivers. So a few advantages and features uh, of the service router platform. First, there's complete segregation of the control and data planes. So the service routers switch fabric modules or its control plane modules are strictly responsible for control plane operations while the line cards take care of the data plane operations. Lossless routing engine failure. Due to the service router keeping its control plane and data plane separated, a failure or switchover of SFMs will not affect the SR's ability to forward traffic. Fault tolerant architecture. The service router boots from up to three different compact flash slots, CF3, 2, and 1, installed in each switch fabric module. If the router fails to boot due to an image or a configuration failure, it'll try to load the required files from each available compact flash disk. So if it tries to load SROS from compact flash 3, which it reads by default, uh, if that fails, it'll try to load the secondary uh, image, which is also on CF3. But if the primary and secondary images fail, then it'll move over to uh, the compact flash in slot 2 and try to load the OS from there. The rinse and repeat, it'll do the same for slot one. And since uh, each fabric module or each control plane module uh, has three compact flash slots, um, in a given, we'll just say a critical failure scenario, uh, if you had complete synchronization between both SFMs in your chassis and you had all of the compact flash slots uh, populated and synchronized, um, then it'll go through six iterations of read-write failures before the router is just completely unable to boot. Robust synchronization. 
the SR synchronizes both of its configuration files, which is config.cfg and boff.cfg, which is our boot options file, and all of its OS files, which end in the .tim extension between switch fabric modules. This guarantees the service router will never encounter a split brain scenario and all billing QoS scripting data is kept synchronous in the event of a routing engine failure or switchover. And the last feature is probably my uh, favorite, which is true headless operation. Uh, the service router's forwarding information base is uploaded to each input output module from its control plane module during a normal boot sequence. This enables each line card to essentially act as its own independent router. Each line card has its own independent ASIC, though all do share the same chassis backplane. This allows the service router, once fully booted, to forward traffic with no physical control plane installed in the chassis. Traffic is switched between line cards via the service router flexible fast path complex. Now, this doesn't mean that the service router is going to perform without a head uh, in the same fashion it would with a head, or I should say a control plane. Um, the line cards will continue to forward traffic, but any of your control plane operations will be out the window. So things like your routing updates, uh, your link state updates, your uh, LDP signaling and whatnot, and none of that's gonna function. So depending on the state of the network prior to uh, both of your switch fabric modules or control plane modules failing, it is entirely possible that yes, the line cards will continue to forward traffic, but they can be forwarding that traffic directly into a black hole. So let's take a look at our initial configuration here. And what we'll do before I read through this is we'll just start our project in GNS3. We'll name this, I don't know, my 7750 project. All right, so let's just mimic this topology on our right here. Uh, six service routers numbered N1 through six. All right, what I'll do is I'll start these up and console into them just so we could check out the boot sequence. All right, so we're at our login prompt here, so we'll switch back to a PowerPoint slide. All right, so we've got our project in GNS3 created and modeled after our topology. So the default username and password for SROS is admin admin. 
each hardware component must be configured. So the IOM or IMM type must be specified. Also the MDA type must be specified. And our goals for this module is to configure the correct IOM or IMM and MDA on each service router, as well as configure the appropriate system name on each service router. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of. So again, admin admin. We'll log us into the router. So the first command that we'll issue is show card state. And like the name implies, it shows us the state of all the cards installed in our chassis. Now here for the card in slot one, we see that it's not provisioned and our operational state is unprovisioned. But the router's smart enough to know that it's an Iowan 3X PV card. So uh, the way we configure that is first we'll enter our configure context and we'll specify card one. And we'll take a look at our available options just by pressing the tab key. Uh, you can also do a question mark. And that'll show you not only the available options, but also the definitions of those options as well. So in our particular module, all we're going to be concerned with uh, is the card type as well as the MDA. So first thing we'll do is we'll specify the card type. And I'll press tab again. So you see you have these available options to choose from between your input output modules and your integrated media modules. And in our example, the IOM we're looking for is the IOM 3 XPV. So we'll just paste that and press enter. Now, once we're in the configure card one context, we can do a command info, and that'll show us the configuration within this particular context. So if we type show card state again, we see that our IOM in slot one is provisioned as an IOM 3XPB, and its operational state is up. So the next step in our process would be to configure, configure our uh, media dependent adapter, or our MDA. That's in card one, slot one. And as you can see, again, it's unprovisioned. And this is our MDA type. So very quickly, we can do a show port. And you can see we have no available ports because we haven't configured our media uh, dependent adapter yet. So right now we're in the configure card one context. So we'll enter. MDA and specify our MDA in slot one. And here are our available options for MDAs. So we have some synchronous ethernet as well. But the only one that we're gonna be concerned with is our MDA type. So MDA type, I can press tab again. And these are all of our available options for media dependent adapters. But in our virtual router, we're only going to be concerned with the five port, one gig MDA. And again, we can do an info and we can see our MDA type is configured and it's not shut down. If we go back and enter the card context, we can see that our MDA is configured there as well. And if we wanted to look at um, the entire configuration for our cards, for example, um, we can't just go back and type info because unfortunately that's been disallowed. So now we'll have to go through um, the command admin display config. So I'll just hop back in our card one context. And we can issue this command um, directly from this context by prepending it with a backslash, or we can go to root and issue it without a backslash. So uh, we'll do it both ways, why not? So we're in our card one context now. So uh, we'll do a backslash, admin display config, pipe match card, which is our, our variable, and context all. And as you can see, this shows us the configuration for card one.
So this is looking at it directly from card one's context. And this is looking at it from the context of root, so to speak, with our admin display config. And by holding control and pressing Z, we can go directly back to the root context. So we'll just enter that same command, admin display config, pipe match card, context all, and it gives us the same information. So what happens if we're in our cards context and we try to show the configuration? It simply won't let us. If we press tab, you see admin isn't one of the available options. Uh, show's rather hidden, but even with show, we're sort of limited on what we can and can't show. So again, this is telling us the command has to be issued from the root context, but if we prepend it with a backslash, then we can issue commands regardless of the context that we're in. So we'll do a show card state. And as we can see at this point, we have our uh, input output module configured and in an operationally up state. We also have our media dependent adapter configured and in an operationally up state. So if we take a look at our ports now, you can see that we do have our five ports with a rather large MTU that are all admin down. And of course, they're gonna be in operationally down state as well. So we have our hardware configured. Our ports are appearing. So the last step for N1 at least would be to configure the system name. And that's done within the configure system context. So we'll enter the configure context, then system, and we'll specify the name. And as you can see, it has to be, uh, what well, has a maximum of 32 characters. So our name is gonna be N1. And as you can see, these changes are applied immediately. Uh, there are ways to mimic a live configuration as though you were working on a Juniper in the sense of uh, entering the configuration, making changes, but not having those changes applied instantly. But we'll save that for another module. But for now, um, just know that by default, any command issued is applied instantaneously. So if you take a look at our system configuration, you can see our name does show up as N1. And all these are there by default as far as DNS, SNMP, et cetera. And lastly, the only thing we're gonna do is save this configuration by issuing the command admin save. And it's just that simple. Let's go ahead and log out here. Now we're gonna do the same for routers N2 through N6, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently. Uh, we're gonna use a feature in Secure CRT called the command window. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to send commands to the active session. Um, and all I did was right click within the command window and go to send commands to. Uh, so you could send them to the active session, all sessions, um, the visible sessions, or you can send them to a specific tab group. So if say for example, in four, five and six were some type of device that I had to logically group together and issue the same commands to, um, I could create a tab group out of these three tabs and then have those commands sent to only that specific tab group. So for now, we're just gonna send them to all sessions. And as you can see, I'll type the commands in the command window, but these commands will be issued to all of our sessions. 
So again, we'll start with the command show card state. And just like on N1, we have a IOM installed in slot one, but it isn't provisioned. So it isn't operationally up yet. So in order to configure the card on N2, um, let's see how do I want to do this? So we step through the context on N1, but just for the sake of example, uh, you don't have to configure these literally one line or one command at the time. Uh, you can step through contexts and for example, we're going to configure uh, our IOM in one line and that's going to be configure card one, card type. I'm just going to cheat a little bit and paste that right there. And this is the exact same as going into configure, then going into card one and specifying the card type. All right, I hold control and press Z to get back to root. And we'll also configure the MDA in the same fashion. So configure card one, MDA one, MDA type. I'm just gonna press tab here. And as you can see, we get the exact same information returned as though we were in this context. So logically right now, the router is in the context for MDA one. And if I remember correctly, this was our particular MDA. All right, so now we're just gonna do a show card state. And just like on N1, our IOM is operationally up and our MDA is operationally up as well. So the last thing to do would be to configure the system name. And we'll do that using the command configure system name it's going to be into we'll admin save that and on n3 um again just for the sake of example uh, i'll show you how the service router can accept commands regardless of the context that you're currently in so we'll enter the system context just for the sake of example now this is where of course we configure our name with We'll go ahead and get that taken care of. Configure system name in, in three. So now what we'll do is we'll configure our card and our MDA from the system context. Now, of course, you know, we can't, there is no card one uh, within this context. I'll press tab so you can see the available options. But like I said previously, uh, SROS can interpret any command regardless of context as long as it's prepended with that backslash. So as long as we say backslash, we can issue any command regardless of the context that we're in. Right now we're in the configure system context, but we're gonna configure our card as well as our MDA type uh, outside of that con, outside of the configure card context. So we'll say backslash configure card one, card type, that's going to be the IOM 3XPB, and we're going to say backslash, show card state, and just like on the previous two routers, we do have uh, our IOM in an operationally up state, but our MDA is yet to be configured, so we'll go into uh, where the context can we go to? We'll just go into the ISIS context. Figure out our ISIS. We'll start that process. And we'll configure our MDA from the ISIS context. So backslash, configure card one, MDA one, MDA type, and then the type of MDA that's installed. And again, if we do a show card state, we can see that our IOM is in an operationally up state as well as our MDA. And we can also do show port to see that all five of our ports do show up. So right now I'll just go back and if we take a look at the configuration, we see that uh, the ISIS process did start, 
Um, so ISIS is running, well, the ISIS daemon, I should say, uh, did start because I entered that context. Uh, typically, when you enter a protocol's context on SROS, uh, the protocol is enabled. However, some protocols are in a shutdown state, like I believe LDP, for example, or uh, reservation protocol traffic engineering. Those protocols, and MPLS, I believe, those protocols are in a shutdown state by default. So all we're going to do is we're just going to say no ISIS, zero. And we can assign different process IDs to our router uh, protocols. And the default ID for any new processes is going to be zero. So that's why we had the zero after our ISIS. So if you look at our configuration again, uh, the ISIS daemon has been shut down. There's no ISIS config. And we'll just go back to the root context and issue an admin save. Now, just for the sake of seeing the command window in action, we're going to configure the last three routers. Uh, we're going to configure their hardware from the commands window. All right, so the commands are going to be the same. And I'm going to shorthand this a little bit, but it's going to be configure card one, card type. And let's take a look at our MDA. So our card has been configured. Now we're going to configure our MDA. Configure card one. MDA1, MDA type, and as we can see, both of our MDAs are now uh, in an operationally up state. Hey, Dave, I love you, but <laughs> let me get back to you, Dave. <laughs> We're almost done here. So, um, and even from the all sessions window, I'll issue a show port. And on all of our routers, we can see that our ports are appearing as, as they should. All right, so since we're going to be setting a different host name for our routers, we won't configure that through the all sessions window clearly. Uh, but we're going to run through that rather quickly. So we'll do it. Uh, we'll step through the context for N4. So we'll issue configure system. Specify the name is N4 and backslash because we're not in the root context. Admin save will save our configuration and holding control and pressing Z will get us back to the root context. And on N5, we'll say configure system name N5. Admin save. And on N6, even if you're in the root context, you can still prepend your commands with a backslash. Um, a, uh, but one of my close colleagues uh, by the name of Scott, uh, he actually put me onto this. I, I was unaware of this, but um, this is actually how I write configurations for service routers now is um, I prepend everything with a backslash. So for example, we're in the root context where most commands are issued from. Uh, so we'll just say backslash configure system name N6. And as you can see, that tick as well. Now, the reason I like uh, prepending everything with the backslash is because I, I really enjoy flat configurations. They make much more sense to me than say, for example, if you were to just issue a show admin not show admin, but admin display config. Uh, it's readable, but my mind just enjoys a, a, a more flat configuration. Like if you were to issue, you know, show configuration pipe display set in Junos, uh, it issues that configuration in a flat manner. So you can build methods of procedure uh, for configuring these service routers in the exact same way. So configure card one, card type. You know, that could be 
one line in that configuration. Um, you can be a card one, NBA one, NBA type can be another line in that configuration. So you can develop a mop that doesn't have to step through context. Uh, you can develop a mop that can reconfigure the router regardless of which context you're working in, all from root. And it makes it easier, at least for me personally, to uh, you know do, do things like spot mistakes or if I have to back up or if some command didn't take, I could really get a good idea of exactly where to uh, where to start looking as far as resolving that conflict is concerned. So we'll just take a look at our service routers. Um, and just out of habit, we'll issue an admin save. It saves the configuration on all of them. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint again. So just to close the loop here, our, our goals were to configure the correct IOM or IMM. And, and MDA on each SR. We've done that. Our IOM and MDA are both in an operationally up state on N1. Same goes for N2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And our other goal was to configure the appropriate system name on each service router. And we did that as well. N1. In two, in three, in four, in five, and in six. So at this time, we've completed our initial configuration. We've learned how to log into uh, the service router operating system, as well as provision the hardware and give our service router a unique name. So the next module is probably going to cover um, our physical ports and our logical router interfaces. Um, after that, we might get into some dynamic routing. But eventually, um, these modules are going to build up sort of taking a layered approach um, to BGP. So once we have the initial configuration out the way, like I said, we'll get into the physical and logical aspects of our ports and router interfaces. Then we'll get into our IGP or our dynamic routing. After that, we'll cover uh, MPLS and then the service architecture, which is where these 7750s really shine. And after that, uh, we'll wrap everything up with BGP, you may throw some QoS in there and whatnot. So, um, as always, I appreciate uh, criticism, whether it's constructive or not. Uh, feedback is always welcome. If there was anything I could have done better, uh, anything I uh, got wrong, did I misspeak somewhere, is, 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 is misinformation in one of my presentations, I would very much appreciate it if, um, if that was brought to my attention. Uh, I will make those improvements because the last thing I want to do is uh, spread misinformation. So uh, if you like the presentation, let me know as well. But um, I'm really more focused on uh, where and how I can improve these things. Uh, do I need to speak more clearly? Do I need to speak more relaxed? Am I too low? Am I too loud? Et cetera. So yeah, if you guys can give me some feedback, I'd appreciate it. So thank you for viewing this presentation and keep an eye out for the next one. Thank you.